So I have a very interesting story to tell you guys about backyard breaks. And so I was in their uh, a JMO live. Uh, they were having some problems on it. Um, I, their lives are not as strong as they used to be. And often the breaker, in this case JMO, is trying to pump up the Luca 101 hunt, which he said was $2 million so if you could pull it. Uh, people bought these boxes that were, I believe, $5,100, and none of them pulled it. A guy bought four boxes, didn't get any really good hits. I think his best hit was a one-on-one -on -one Paul George gold, or not a one-on-one, -on -one, a out of 10 Paul George gold. And then, you know, I just said, hey, this is a pretty bad case, and then they banned me from Backyard Breaks. So Backyard Breaks, they've been doing a lot of these repackages, these nebulas, or flames, or... Uh, and you know a repackage I think is a bad I you're not going to make money from a repackage because if the card was worth that much worth was easily sellable for more than the repackage and or the mystery product or whatever it is they would not sell it so here we have a scenario where if you comp the cards they're never going to be if you comp the whole case the case of cards cannot be more valuable than what somebody paid so for $1,800, $1,700 a box, you're not gonna get that value per box. You will have some boxes that are 300, some cards that come out of that nebula that's $300, $500. And the large majority, if you have a really good hit in that case, um, then expect the other cards to be worthless, right? Or worth almost um, balancing out. It's the whole concept of a mystery repack. The mystery repack is meant to make money for the breaker and the person making the repack. The mystery repack is not meant for you to make money, right? Otherwise, they would just sell it as a single and get it over with that way. So there are a lot of really shady things happening and a lot of statements that I as an attorney, when I listen to them say, oh my gosh, this is worth this, and then it comps for like one-tenth the value. Um, and the logic behind the one-on-one -on -one, uh, chase is that nobody knows, everyone assumes that it's not pulled yet. But it could easily be pulled, the person just didn't flex it, or maybe the person was younger. Uh, these were older boxes, the much older boxes that were cheaper at one time, and people did open them for fun. Uh, they weren't $5,100 boxes that they're charging nowadays, right? Luca Prism. Prism, I think Prism Hobby 2017, these boxes were very, very cheap. So I think there is a lot of, um, you know, I, I don't know, like in, in advertising, it's called puffery, where you kind of say things that are a little outrageous, but because it's advertising, it's assumed that it's reasonable to say. But then sometimes they cross, in my opinion, they cross the lines. Um, you, you can't say that you know, this repack is always gonna get your money back and you, know, you can't guarantee you that. And the, many times they guarantee the hits too. Oh, hey, case, uh, I saw Jonah do this and he and a person bought uh, two nebulas thinking that the case hit was active and then he pulled two cards that comp less than $700. He paid $1,800 per box, pulling maybe $1,000 of cards and he was very upset at Jonah for uh, saying that the case hit is active so it's one of these things where they're always trying to get you to buy. They're just gonna use any sales tactic to get you to buy. And then anyone who is a reasonable human being say, wait, so I, I got into um, a little, again, they ban you automatically, at least JMO does. Um, and JMO had a very tough night last night. He was trying to get things for a thousand. He was trying to sell team spots for a thousand, selling them for 300, 400. People just gave him free spots, but the card breaking, the card breaking hobby, as I've seen JMO lose a lot of money, I've seen Sui lose a lot of money, I've seen Jonah lose a lot of money on team breaks. No, and then they're very negative. Uh, it's not a fun place to be, you know, when they turn on you like that. So, anyway, my point is backyard breaks, you know, the hype is over, people lose money, it's the same people buying, there's no new buyers, there's no new big whales, because like at the end of the day, you can get a 4% CD. So if you truly wanted to put your money in an investment and not a gamble, there are so many better investments out there at this current moment in time, including the safest investment you could ask for, a bank CD at 4%.
that is way that's way better than buying a Luca Prism and trying to pull a 101 which may not even exist or may have already been pulled or maybe sitting in Panini headquarters right now. Maybe they're going to redeem, you know, do some type of promotion around it. So, repacks, mystery packs, uh, my opinion is you're going to see more and more desperate breakers. Uh, Backyard Breaks also does its mystery packs as well, which is not a good deal because if the average is, I think I was looking at the real JR's mystery pack, the average is 1500. Why are people bidding 2000, 4000, 7000? The average also includes the triggers and the go and take it. So like it includes everything. So they, they have so many different gimmicks. They're not, they don't only have two gimmicks, right? They have free gimmicks. They have the lottery ball, right? The golden ticket, the trigger. And, and again, there's just so many, when you have a, a lot of these salesy gimmicks, right? These sales specials as somebody who works in marketing, I know the more specials we have and the more complicated they stack, the worse the deal is. So if you have to rely on mystery tickets or mystery boxes and repacks, and you're, you're really not selling a high-end product, you're selling a gamble. You're selling gambling to gen degenerate gamblers. And there's only one way that no matter how much money a gambler has, if they become a degenerate, there's only one route. They're gonna go broke. No matter how much money they have, they will go broke because Every trust fund has a, a limit, and when you buy this type of high-end stuff, you hit the limit. So again, you, you see from the breaks, the breaks are doing very poorly. Um, I think Sports Card Radio also covered this, that um, the, their two biggest kind of stars, uh, Nikki Rips and um, Sarah, their only female breaker, they've left to do their own thing. I think maybe start a competing business, perhaps. You um, can't tell me that this is like a good idea. So when I looked at backyard breaks, I thought they were pretty honest. Again, the tra tra uh, Trevor Lawrence, you know, the it it's a Tesla. It's a Tesla. We I keep it. Uh, did they actually donate money, you know, to charity? Is there anyone who followed up on that? No. It's very interesting in this a society when you get in trouble, you just say, "Oh, we're going to donate a large amount to charity," and you know that no one's actually going to check on you, right? Like. Did anyone actually check? Did they donate a dime to charity? They're supposed to don't. They're supposed to give away the card and then donate the card value to charity. Did that actually? Did either one of those two happen? No, because people forgot. So anyway, uh, things are going to be pretty tough for backer breaks. I think coming the, the more mystery products they have, you know the the real Jr. Sam Nubs. Every Friday it seems like they have this. Um, huge mystery where they just sell mystery packs of and it's kind of hilarious actually what they're doing so they break cards for like the real JR and then J the real JR then sells the cards back to other break other people on the app via backdoor breaks and a mystery product like you can't even make some of this stuff up it's just so illogical so okay let's say a box of prism costs 5100 He's gonna break, let's say, ten boxes to get like a Luca Silver, um, and then so then he's gonna sell. So he's losing a lot of money. He's losing probably ninety percent, ninety ninety five percent. Then he's gonna use that money to sell in backyard breaks and a mystery pack, and then the person buying the mystery pack loses ninety percent, and then it's just a bunch of people taking L's to the face. I don't know how else to say. It. Like I've seen. It's a very interesting business model, but the problem becomes what happens when you don't have any new whales, when you don't, when your $1,000, you know, team break goes for 300 every night, you got a problem. Um, and they have a problem now because money is tough to come by. And if you truly did have that type of wealth and you were an intelligent individual, there's so many better investment opportunities than gambling on cards. Let me know what you guys feel in the comments below. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just banning anyone. If you say anything bad, even remotely close, I think the JMO was banning people who wanted to do another team break because he had lost so much money on the team break. They're getting very angry now and they're, they're getting very angry, very upset because they're losing money from each break that each team break they're doing. They only make money from the divisional breaks and they go awful. Um, the type of money that people are paying and the type of cards are getting again. It's 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 the hobby. The hobby is meant to be lose your money. 
when you're breaking boxes. It's no different from Pokemon or Magic, any box break, you lose about 90% of your value. As soon as the box is open, the box has a lot more value sealed than it does open. And um, then what they do is then they throw the cards in a mystery pack and then people lose even more value. It's, it's this never ending cycle where they open a box, they take the best card, it takes a lot of money to get a good card, and the good card gets put in a mystery pack and that mystery pack gets sold to somebody. Eventually people are A, they're gonna run out of money so they simply cannot do this anymore or B, they're gonna realize this is a really bad deal. Like the guy, um, there was some Asian guy who was new and he was like a first time buyer and he was buying some Nebulas because they told him, oh, Nebulas are good. They t were trying to tell him the product and he got very angry, got very angry at Jonah and then he just left um, and never came back. Uh, and his profile was him with a little kid. He, he probably lost about, uh, he probably bought three or four Nebulars that night. And uh, he probably lost everything because every single card he pulled out the Nebs are like a $500 comp card. And then you gotta take after eBay fees, you gotta understand that fraud and uh, bad things can happen, right? When you sell on eBay. It's, it's fascinating because I think the, the golden days of the backyard breaks are definitely over. This type of, hey, you know, let's try to spend whatever we can to pull whatever card we can. A, they don't have money anymore, the, the whale customers. So you don't see them often. You don't see them as much. And B, um, they have other, like chasing Charizard, for instance. He was, even people who don't normally buy, he was supporting them, you know, he was supporting them, he was supporting them. Uh, he got some, I think a brain tumor or something, and then he had his personal issues to deal with. That's why like the whatnot format doesn't really make any sense because it's not like YouTube where you can organically grow. When you post a video on YouTube, people two years from now can watch the video and they can subscribe to you from the video. But for whatnot, there is no organic growth that way because you it's everything is live and everything is not saved. It is similar to Twitch, right? It's more similar to Twitch than it would be to YouTube. In Twitch, it's really hard to grow. The people who are on the top will be on the top. But the people on the bottom, there's no way to get up unless you also had another YouTube channel. And that's why you see a lot of people and whatnot, like Sports Card Investor, like Card Collector 2, right? The only reason they have audiences is not because the audience is coming from whatnot um, organically. There's not that many people and whatnot. It's because they're bringing people from YouTube to whatnot. If they didn't have YouTube channels, they too would have no presence on whatnot at all. Anyway, let me know uh, in the comments below. Bye, guys.